You wake up from an afternoon nap, like Kyle over here. You open YouTube and watch a video on the many ways you can die on planets within the solar system. You find out that Venus kills you with the heat, Mercury with no atmosphere, and Jupiter squashes you with gravity. Boring. Well, what if I told you that there are way deadlier planets out there with even more interesting ways to die outside of the solar system on what we call exoplanets? And yes, most of them would simply kill you from extreme heat, but what if you could actually land on them? And what about the ones that aren't that hot? Let's start with planet K2-141b. Good luck! Not only does this planet orbit so fast that one year is completed by the time you'd finish lunch on Earth, but it's also 1.5 times the size of our planet and tidally locked. This means that one side always faces its star, which results in a permanent day side and a permanent night side. Because of this, the surface looks like an absolute nightmare. Half of it is glowing like magma stew with an ocean of lava tens of kilometers deep, the other side is permanently frozen. It also has 2.23 times Earth's gravity, so walking feels like you're trying to carry Shaq on your back. You begin to land, which immediately sets off the temperature warning. Makes sense, your ship is literally melting. The atmosphere is so hot that it doesn't carry water vapor that would become rain. It carries rock vapor. That's right, rock vapor. And that then condenses on the night side of the planet and rains back down as huge stones. Solid rocks. You decide to land in the middle of the planet to avoid the heat. However, there is a reason that this is called the Terminator Zone. As soon as you leave the ship, a gust of wind would knock you over, and one of the many rocks raining down would probably hit and crush you instantly. If you survived this, getting back on the ship would be a good idea, except the hull would be fusing with the ground like when you overfry an egg by one second and it becomes permanently a part of the pan. Oh, by the way, if you thought this was the worst part about K2-141b, you'd be wrong. Look at the horizon. That's right, it's glowing brighter, and the wind begins to go really fast. Like faster than the speed of sound on Earth fast. Yeah, that's what we can only call a lava tornado. And it's about to hit you. Your body quickly launches into the air and immediately grills into a million pieces of ash and then gets dumped into the magma ocean. What a peaceful death. Wait, you want something even more extreme? What about this weird planet? It's called HD 189733b, which looks like a sapphire jewel. It's kind of beautiful. Maybe too beautiful. As you descend, you see that it's actually the universe's deadliest wind tunnel. The blue color, not water, it's silicate, as in glass. It also has 2.5 times Earth's gravity, and oh by the way, it's a gas giant, so no surface to land on anyway. It's a good thing you're in the spaceship, because technically your lungs should collapse instantly and your blood vessels should burst from the atmospheric pressure. But that's way too simple, so if you survived that, as soon as you get through, you'd be hit by 8,700 km an hour winds, and before you could question anything, you'd be finally cut by microscopic shots of glass rain slicing sideways at Mark 7, which shreds not only the skin off of your face, but slices your entire skeleton like a piece of salami cut one million times. Your remains would drift away. Good thing the star of this planet orbits is stripping it down and destroying it with high doses of radiation from being way too close. Deserved for being such a murderous planet. But not as murderous as this next planet. It's called Ogle 20... You know what, it's called Hearth for short. Yes, like from Star Wars, because look at it. Pure snow and ice. At least you can walk on it and not be instantly killed, theoretically. It's another planet around five times Earth's mass. Its tiny little red dwarf star doesn't provide a lot of heat, but hey, you already had enough of that from the first planet, and Hoth actually is quite far away from its star, so it will always be cold. You land, and like the scientists on Earth, you don't know if it's made of rock or gas. And it doesn't matter because it's minus 220 degrees outside. The land is frozen water, ammonia, methane, and nitrogen. Uh-oh. Well, it can't be that bad, honestly, because you've seen ice before. You leave the ship with confidence. You take one step and your leg snaps clean off like a frozen twig. You fall down. Your suit cracks open and your breath crystallizes and collapses your lungs within seconds. Well then, let's move on to the next one. Wasp-121b. And no, we're not talking about the terror insects at your summer picnic. NASA studied it for three years straight, and apparently it's a massive gas giant so close to its star the gravity stretches it into a football shape. The atmosphere, hot enough to vaporize metal, which then condenses into iron clouds. It's basically a medieval weapon disguised as weather. And the temperature? Yeah, well over 2,100 degrees. 
But you're learning. This time you will go and land on the night side of the planet. Small problem with that though. At night it's still 1500 degrees and those metals in the atmosphere condense into liquid gemstone rain. Yes, gemstone rain. Most likely. You think that sounds cool until a 3 carat liquid ruby drops from the sky at terminal velocity, breaks through the ship, solidifies and splits your helmet like a watermelon cut by a samurai sword. Welcome to luxury death by Cartier. Although if you hadn't just died that way, the night side of the planet was still so hot, you would have been roasted or crushed by atmospheric pressure or just ripped into various pieces of corpse by cyclones so powerful it'd make you look like the planet's fidget spinner. However, all of these planets so far have been exactly that, just planets. But the next one is so special it used to be inside a star, Kepler-70b. That's right, not near, not on top, inside. What you see here is the core of a dead gas giant. That means there is no gas or glass rain this time, just a planet made of rock. The original planet was actually engulfed by its dying star, supposedly, which was a red giant, but is now what we call a hot blue subdwarf. And we're not talking about the category on an adult website. It orbits 65 times closer to its star than Mercury does to our sun, completing an orbit in just 5.6 hours. The temperature, a ridiculous 6,800 degrees Celsius. Wait, hotter than the actual sun? Fantastic. Unfortunately, there is only one way to die on this planet. You instantly vaporize into a fine mist. Oh, too boring for you? All right, how about Gliese 1132b? It would seem familiar at first glance, a planet that shares a striking number of features with Earth, including a little bit larger mass and radius. It's even around the same age. Perhaps this is a break from dying in horrific ways. Nope. It smells like cyanide and it's penetrating your suit. See, the surface is volcanic and the sky is like World War I chemical warfare, literally. You're inside a cloud of hydrogen cyanide. Apparently, Gliese 1132b not only lost its original atmosphere from the radiation of a nearby large red dwarf, but it's actively regrowing a new one. The intense forces from that same star are squeezing and stretching the planet like Play-Doh, triggering violent volcanic activity that releases gases to the surface. Simply lovely. Compared to the previous planet, it's a comfortable 137 degrees, which would still be 100% lethal. Assuming you could walk around at that temperature, the vents on the planet would acidify you in excruciating pain, turn you into chemicals, and spew you back into the atmosphere. What's that? What if the clouds weren't made of chemical warfare, and were instead made of metal? Yes, LTT 9779b, as these names get more ridiculous, reflects 80% of the light it receives because its clouds are made of titanium vapor and other liquid metal droplets. It also orbits its sun in 19 hours. This disco ball planet literally should not be able to exist. And it's so bright, you'd think it could blind you. It won't, technically, but go ahead. Take off your visor. Enjoy seeing this planet burned into your retinas for the rest of your short life. You then descend on a jetpack to try and survive the atmospheric pressure as well as the winds, which is near impossible, but then of course you would be flash boiled, you know, in the 2000 degree temperatures. But thanks to the titanium vapor, your bones would shine as you perish. Welcome to Planet Chrome, where you literally become chrome. Briefly. Okay, now we're talking. This one is a super Earth. 55 Kenkri E. You might be wondering if survival is possible anywhere on these exoplanets, and if it is, it has to be a place called the Super Earth. Well, data shows that Kenry's atmosphere has mostly hydrogen and helium and no water. Its star is like the sun, but sadly this planet is also really close to it. So a year is only 18 hours. That means it'll be hot just like the others. But maybe there's another way to survive here. You hope so because it turns out the planet could be made of diamonds. Yes, diamonds. You'd be richer than all the countries on Earth combined throughout all of time. But it also could be an entire 2000 degree lava ocean tidally locked world filled with nothing but agony. You know what? Those diamonds aren't worth it. F*** this. You fly into the sun since it'll have the same outcome, but faster. Next up is L9859D, or as it should be called, Planet Fart. You land on this Earth-like rocky planet and immediately puke. The atmosphere is sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and every possible gas that smells like death's armpit. There are active volcanoes and they shoot magma out of geysers and coat the air with more rot and not the good old brain rot back on Earth, which you kind of miss at this moment. You choke, you puke again, violently, and you lose your sense of smell. 
Your body disintegrates from the extreme gas heat that in theory would have killed you before all the vomiting. Even your ghost smells like rotten eggs. Surely this one would have stopped you wanting to visit more of these planets, right? No? Okay, say hello to K218b. This solid sub-Neptune exoplanet orbits a red dwarf star in what scientists initially thought might be a habitable zone. This excites you. They even detected water vapor. Great news, right? Well, if you learned anything from Kankari and Galiza, you would realize it's all a big deception. The water here might be in a supercritical state, meaning it's not liquid, not gas, just an angry in-between. And that ocean? When you jump in, it doesn't splash. It absorbs you. Then it would simultaneously crush, boil, and chemically dissolve your body, all at the same time. Your corpse would be caught in a state of matter even physics would need a support group to explain, as you're destroyed by the very element that sustains life on Earth. Poetic. Don't worry, we're almost done, and I've saved the most horrifying, nightmarish planets for last. Wait, now what's this? You see light flashing, insanely fast flashing, and it's not your local techno rave. A powerful wave of x-rays disintegrates the ship like it's made of single-ply toilet paper. Magically, you get thrown onto a planet called Poltergeist. You look up and see another two planets from the surface that have equally positive names. It doesn't matter that this planet is made up of rock because you're orbiting a pulsar. In this case, it is a neutron star that was formed by two stars who died, became white dwarfs, got too close together, spiraled over billions of years, and ultimately merged into a supernova. The result? A neutron star spinning 161 times a second and producing the x-rays that destroyed your ship from before, and also those super relativistic jets. You get hit with another high dose of radiation. If you weren't to immediately turn into atoms or Chernobyl fish, your muscles would seize. Your blood would begin to boil inside your veins. Every cell in your body would start unzipping its DNA like it's been given a self-destruct code. You wouldn't even be able to move because of radiation-induced neural failure. This would happen over a matter of seconds. You don't even burn. You dephase into radioactive vapor. And now, the final most terrifying planet you've been waiting for. A planet. A planet that orbits a black hole. You heard that right. A black hole. And yes, that's the real name. The one you landed on with another fantastic name, M51ULS1b, is purely hypothetical, even though there was a discussion over its existence. That's because it also would exist outside the Milky Way, an extra galactic planet. It's dark, very dark. There's no light but the accretion disk. If only you could return to Earth, but you cannot. Time dilation means 10 minutes down here is 10 years up there. You get closer to the black hole as the planet orbits to its doom. It sucks you in. Wait, did you just leave the universe? 